43% of the top selling baby formula brands are out of stock. Today, President Biden met with manufacturers and retailers in hopes of finding a solution to the problem. Officials say they're looking into importing baby formula from other countries to meet the demand. They're also working with infant formula manufacturers to boost supplies. The shortage stems from COVID related supply chain issues and several recalls. Amid a national baby formula shortage and higher prices at the grocery store, a Greensboro nonprofit is doing what it can to help some of the most vulnerable families. The Salvation Army of Greensboro operates two family stores where customers can find food and clothes at discounted prices. Corps Officer Lieutenant Chris Raymer says the organization receives donated items multiple times a week, which can include baby food and formula. He says the group is trying its best to keep formula on the shelves for parents in need. Recently, we have received baby formula, um, and currently uh, we do have some um, in stock at both of our stores, but it is, it is very low stock. Um, so we, do, uh, we don't see that um, lasting uh, um, really through the end of the week. As inflation continues to drive up prices for food at grocery stores, Raymer says families can find quality food items for less. Uh, but they're able to come to us and, and buy groceries um, mostly non-perishable items, um, but at a, a, at a extremely reduced price, uh, typically 75 to 80% off of what you would find um, on the store shelves. Salvation Army does operate two family stores. One is on Westgate City Boulevard, while the other is on North Elm Street. Both are open Tuesday through Saturday to anyone in the public. I, I hate that you know, the, that they're running so low, but thank goodness they have something and that yes. discount is no joke. And that they have something and they get these, they have a partnership with another organization that donates food to them, sometimes multiple times a week and baby formula often is included in that. Uh, but he said with the shortage, it's to the point where they have to put it behind the counter to make sure that wow. it's rationed off because it's hotcakes. He says people are calling all the time, like, do you have baby formula? Yeah, I mean, it is real. <laughs> I've been experiencing it firsthand. I've shared that with you guys multiple times on the four to five. And I didn't even think about people that go to places like mm -hmm. the Salvation Army to get their formula. They can't even get it there. Because you have to it's um, terrifying. remember it. Prices on everything are going up, including baby formula. So think about people who are already struggling to pay for it. And now they can't even find it in the places where they would go to get it. You know, at a more decent price yeah. are struggling to keep it in stock and as it's, well. And it's already expensive. Oh yeah, I was yeah. about to mention, I mean, for a can, which Baylor's on hypoallergenic, but it's like 40 bucks. Woo! For a can. Is that what yeah. you said? Yeah. So Goodness. think it's about it's been a while for me. <laughs> it's very expensive, and you know she goes through that so fast. Oh, yeah. So educate me. How long does a baby usually stay on formula? Is there like a cutoff age? Because what if you have more than one child that is considered a baby? Or so it's at one year that they say that you can switch to whole milk. Okay, that's the recommendation right now. Obviously, as she's gotten older, she's drinking less milk because we've been introducing more foods like solid foods and even baby food. So that transition kind of starts about six six months. Or so. so there are yeah. some families that have like two small babies that they're about a year apart or nine months apart. So it's, it's a lot. It's a struggle. struggle. It is definitely a struggle. It's a lot. Not to mention diapers. That's a whole other topic. Oh, we'll talk yes. about that again sometime. Yes, we will. Well, now to new development. Supply chain issues across the U.S. The COVID-19 pandemic. Today, President Joe Biden ordered flags be flown at half staff in remembrance of the one million Americans who've lost their lives to COVID-19. He marked the somber milestone with a pre-recorded video message from the White House. Take a listen. We all must do more. We must honor those we have lost by doing everything we can to prevent as many deaths as possible. The president also announced the reveal of new COVID technologies used to make vaccines. Right now, the White House is concerned of a potential surge this fall and winter. Officials are urging Congress to pass a bill to secure more COVID funding, but negotiations remain stalled. Here in North Carolina, the state's weekly COVID report is showing a slight upward trend in hospitalizations. The latest patient count is 442. It's on par with the last few days, but you can see um, in some numbers, if we bring up this graph here, fluctuated over the past month or so. 
Yeah, the state reported numbers as low as 344 back on April 12th. They've gone as high as 458 over that time. Now on the county level, Guilford County hospitalizations are showing a similar trend. The latest patient count is 24 and the gaps that you see are the weekends and holidays when the county doesn't report this number. Dr. Ohl with Atrium Wake Forest Baptist Health says while hospitalizations are going up in the triad, he believes most positive cases are not being reported. Clearly there's there's a lot of positive cases flying under the radar. So I mean, ask most of your friends and people you work with how they've found out they've had COVID lately and they're going to tell you I did a home test. Right now, Governor Roy Cooper is encouraging people to seek treatment quickly if they get sick with COVID-19. He, along with state health leaders, say taking COVID-19 medicine keeps people out of the hospitals and lowers the chance of death. They also say more than two thirds of North Carolinians are considered high risk for severe, severe illness if they catch the virus. To find a place that prescribes COVID medication, you can speak with your doctor or call 1-800-232-0233. You know, I think it's, I hope I'm wrong, but I have a gut feeling a lot of people are just saying, if I have it, I have it, and mm -hmm. I'm not going to go get tested. I've, I've heard some people say that before in public, and, um, and so I think a lot of the cases just aren't, they're happening, and it's not severe for those people if they're lucky enough, and it's just kind of passing through everybody. I think that that's the is that attitude a say? lot, of, no, but that is the attitude a lot of people say. I know a lot of people are like, oh, we're all going to get it, but I think, we still have to be smart. Oh, we do. still have to continue to wash our hands. You know, if you are in crowded places, uh, wear a mask. Because I feel like we went from being super, super clean, like you got to wipe everything yeah. down. Or if you went to a store, there was someone designated to wipe your card off to no one's designated <laughs> to do it. Or it's mm -hmm. an option for you. Or there's no option. Or there's a gas station I've been to locally that's had a broken hand sanitizer dispenser for a couple weeks now. But I feel like at the beginning of the pandemic, oh, that, it was, been, that yeah, would not have been a right. thing. That's right. So I think we're getting a little too relaxed. I'm not saying like people should live in fear, but I think we just have to remember Step to be smart. I think what's so confusing is that, you know, I've done some stories about how there's been an uptick in sickness, not COVID. You know, we've seen an uptick in flu, we've seen an uptick in colds, in the stomach bug, all things like that. So maybe people are kind of confused. They're like, maybe I just have a cold. They're just, mm -hmm. you know, saying, I just have a cold, it's not COVID but it actually could be COVID, but they never get tested. And remember this virus impacts people very differently. I just did that piece about the oh, long yeah. hauler. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's gonna happen to everyone, but it can happen to people and you can pass it on to someone you care about where they could get really sick. So don't live in fear, but just, you know, be smart about some things. That's right, a little extra caution yeah. here and there. Not a bad thing. We learned a lot in this pandemic. Don't put Boy, it to waste. Boy, you're not kidding. That's true. <laughs> learned a lot about ourselves, much less yes. the COVID. <laughs> All right, uh, let's talk about our forecast. We've got some changes coming up as we head into the weekend. And uh, when we talk about these changes, yeah, this is going to be not something you probably love. We're taking a look right now at our sky cam there in High Point. Yeah, you see the clouds starting to move in and we will see gradually, and you may be getting this already, a little sprinkle or two here or there. That will turn into heavier showers. All Although they may be scattered, but we could see more rain. In fact, we'll see on Friday, Saturday and Sunday. It gets better, of course, by the time we all go back to work on Monday. Here's what we see temperature wise. 70 in Walnut Cove, Mount Airy, 73. We've got 69 degrees in Burlington, Greensboro, 66 Reedsville, High Point, 71. Winston-Salem, you have the same reading at 71. Temperatures with the cloud cover and then the chance to see the showers late tonight, overnight, really uh, start to move in. But with all the cloud cover, you don't see a lot of change in our overnight temperatures. I think we'll stay in the 60s for the most part. 66 by 8 p.m., maybe some lower 60s by the time we get to that midnight and 1 a.m. time period. A couple of scattered showers here, not anything major, but uh, a decent amount of rain there in Stokes County, getting ready to move into Surrey County. Remember, this is kind of backwards, right? You think you look at this, you think the radar is running in reverse. The rain is actually moving from the coast inland thanks to the low pressure that sits off the coast. That is unusual, and this low will move inland. Now, notice we just get streaming rain coming in off the coast there for at least a, another couple days. Again, Friday probably our best chance. Even that cold front on the left side of your screen, that will come into play and kind of clear everything out. But we're going to see some warmer weather. In fact, we'll probably get hot and go into the 80s. In fact, well into the 80s by the time we get into next week. It's going to be above our normal high, which is 77 degrees. Here's what that seven day looks like. 73 degrees for your high on Friday. That's a rainy day on again, off again shower, 70%. 50% chance Saturday and 78, 40% Sunday. Could see an isolated thunderstorm either of those days. 
mostly in the afternoon. But look at these readings next week between 83 and 86. That's way above our normal high of 77. We keep that. That will be one of those days. Now, even though you see a rain chance on every day, just remember that's a summertime pattern. So sunny during the better part of the day, a quick little isolated shower, a thunderstorm, 20 to 30 percent chance. That'll be each afternoon, Monday through Thursday. And those overnight lows are in the upper 50s and lower 60s. We have developing news in Forsyth County this afternoon. Winston-Salem police arrested a man connected to the Haynes Mall shooting from the other day. Police say 26 year old Reginald Gray was involved in the argument that led to the shooting. They say he was the person that got shot. He is charged for possession of a firearm by a felon. Police say, of course, they are still investigating. The family of country music star Naomi Judd is opening up about the details of her death. In an emotional interview today, her daughter Ashley Judd revealed that her mother took her own life. She says she was at her home the day she died and was the one who found her. During the interview, she talked about the importance of mental health awareness and understanding how the illness impacts the mind and those dealing with it. Naomi Judd died at age 76, just one day before she was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. A common form of mental illness is depression, but according to a board certified psychiatrist, Dr. Sue Varma, it isn't always easy to detect. She says it can look and feel differently in people, which can make caring for them hard. In high functioning depression, it's also called persistent depressive disorder, where it's like a chronic low level of what we call dysthymia. It's a low mood and you're still functioning. But if you're having this low mood that doesn't go away and you say that I don't have pleasure in the things that I once used to enjoy, or if me getting put together and showing up in the world is exhausting, like if I had to go to lunch with, uh, with Gail and then I come home and I sleep for five days because I was like, oh my God, it was great, but I'm depressed. Like mm -hmm. that took everything out of me. Varma says it is important to look at mental health treatment as self care. She says just like you keep up with your annual physicals, you should also monitor changes in your mental health the same way. So important. Mm -hmm. I think it's hard to detect. Um, I know there was a time in my life when 
I actually thought something was medically wrong and I was mm -hmm. like, why am I so worn out and I don't feel like doing anything and I'm just lethargic. And as time went on and things got better, but then I was talking to a friend of mine who is a counselor and she said, you know, that everything you just said is a sign of depression, mm -hmm. even if it's minor or moderate or whatever. She goes, I think that's what that was. You know, I did my two cents yesterday about mental health and I shared my struggles. I've struggled with anxiety and depression for uh, many years and I used to be kind of quiet about it or mm -hmm. a little embarrassed about it. Like, I don't want people to think yeah. I'm, I'm crazy, but like she said, how we do our physical checkups, you know, we'll talk about diabetes. We'll talk about high blood pressure. Why aren't we talking about mental health? Our mental and our uh, physical very much are connected and go hand oh, in yeah. hand. Mm -hmm. So it should be talked about more and it can be treated just like diabetes or high blood pressure can be treated. There's medication, there's therapy, there's, there's working out. And I think like the pandemic has us talking about it more, mm -hmm. but I think we need to continue to keep talking about it. When I talk to other people, they might have been diagnosed with anxiety or something and they didn't know that that's what they were dealing with for so many years. I think a lot of people don't understand what mental illness is. They hear that mental illness and they'll equate it to being like crazy or something right. like that when that's not <laughs> what it is. I think that we've made a lot of progress as far as talking openly about mm -hmm. our mental health but so much more needs to be done. I do think I'll give it to the generation that's younger than us because yeah. I think that they're more open than any other generation. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, both you and I, Lauren, have talked very openly mm -hmm. about our struggles and what we deal with. And yeah, sometimes like I am a very social person, but I go home and I'm very drained after being social. Because it's almost like wearing a mask, like mm -hmm. especially when you work in something like television where you gotta be on every day and you don't always understand that people are struggling with stuff behind closed mm -hmm. doors, right. but there is a way to navigate it and there are resources and tools out there to get through it. But I think it's just something we need to talk about more because I think a lot of people just really don't understand it. And I think um, we won't see incidents like what we're seeing in the headlines if, if people know the resources that are out there. And also, I just, I, th I think it's, I I'm really glad we're doing, that we're talking mm -hmm. about this. I had panic attacks as a little kid from the time I was six till I was 15. I think s talking about that makes people go, oh, wait, you also, yeah. and then me too. And then if anybody thinks they don't have anything, you're lying to yourself. It's going to be on Everybody some, has something. some right. type of scale and people cope with it in different ways. Right. Exactly. And I think there's no face to mental illness. It no, can really, some of the people you think have the most are probably struggling the most. That's true. It's That's very, true. very true. All right, we All got right. some information well, for you. We want you to pull out your phones here because you know we've been talking a lot about this. Take a picture of your screen. If you or someone you know may be struggling with mental illness, there's the NC National Alliance of Mental Health Referral Line. And then we also have the NC Suicide Prevention Number. Take care of your mental health. We'll be right back.
Yeah, we've got some showers on the way. You need a forecast. Actually, you need an umbrella, or as my grandmother used to say, an umbrella. I don't know why she would say that. 58 degrees, the overnight low tonight. Got a couple of showers here or there, already seeing that. It'll get worse before it gets better. Tomorrow, on and off rain here or there. Could be moderate showers and then some light showers, but overall, it's just all coming from the coast, believe it or not, kind of backwards in the way that we normally see our weather move. You can see it on the radar here. A couple of scattered showers now in Surrey and Stokes County. And if we go out to a wider shot, yeah, here it is. It's that low pressure spinning off the coast, and it'll be moving inland, but that constant flow from the east just bringing in lots of moisture and just generally unsettled weather for at least another two days. And we actually think those rain chances will be up um, not only tomorrow, and tomorrow's the, the worst, really, 70%, but even through the weekend, 50 to 40% Saturday, Sunday. Sunday may not be quite as bad, but a chance of late day storms Saturday and Sunday, 78 and 83. Next week, warm, sunny during the day, low to mid 80s. So then by afternoon, just that normal summertime pop up, isolated shower or thunderstorm. Think about this. Do you believe in coincidence? Today, Coach Lamont talks about how moments in your life can impact your decision making. I love the quote which says that coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. Is there really a thing called coincidence or has much of what we're living out the result of divine planning? I believe it could actually be a matter of both. Our lives are planned by our decisions. The decision you make today will impact the person you are becoming tomorrow. See, we are the creators of destiny and what we put into the earth in result will be what we receive back from it. We must live more conscious, fully aware that the decisions that we're currently making will impact the decisions we make tomorrow. Understand that we are defined by these decisions and the decisions that we will make. This is what I call the cycle of coincidence. So position yourself today. Coincidence is going to do the rest. This is Coach Lamont. Make today your best you day. I'll see you tomorrow. I like that he says you like you, you your decisions are like plants, right? Mm -hmm. You plant that and then they'll affect they'll grow in whatever way you need them to. So good decisions yield good good decisions in the future and the opposite can be true also. Especially with the opposite, like making bad sure. decisions. I think that, you know, as we get older we try to live a better life. But some of the decisions in our past, you know, they creep up with us. But I think in order for us to continue to move forward, you just have to accept some of the more negative decisions that you made in the past in order to actually it's get true. better. Because some people never come to terms with that. I'm the worst decision maker. Are y'all good <laughs> at making decisions? I'm very indecisive in certain situations. But I Don't I'll ask me like where we're gonna go to dinner tonight. Oh, that's <laughs> But like life horrible. decisions, I know you're good at that because I, I get this feeling that you plan things out and think, I like think to, things through. I'm very much a strategic yeah. person, yeah. but as I've gotten older, I've realized you can't always be that strategic, but I, I like to think that I make good life decisions or I have parents and elders that I'm able to lean on to get some advice and confirmation on things. You and I are like, I think, I think we <laughs> make that? some impulsive decisions sometimes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that yeah. doesn't always have to be a bad thing. No, sometimes it's yeah. fun. Like I love to do spur of the moment stuff. My wife's too. like, no, well, did you think this through? I'm like, no, that's the point. But that's why y'all yeah. are a good balance. Yeah. Cause some people are a little too uh, structured Rigid. and they kind of need that. Somebody that's like, you know, just live life. Let's jump off this cliff. That's kind of yeah. me. <laughs> We'll, we'll go jump. Ready? <laughs> Come on, let's go. go. <laughs> Ready to go. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> we'll jump to break. <laughs>
Today, the Event Horizon Telescope is delighted to share with you the first direct image of the gentle giant in the center of our galaxy, Sagittarius A star. I love science news. Today, scientists provided the first look at a massive, supermassive actually they call it, black hole. It's right in the middle of our galaxy. It's called Sagittarius A. It is only the second one to ever be photographed, or they actually like to say imaged because it's not a photograph, but the feat was accomplished by the same Event Horizon Telescope that in 2019 unveiled the first ever photo of a black hole. Sagittarius A possesses, get this, 4 million times the mass of our sun, and it's located about 26,000 light years, which is 5.9 trillion miles from Earth. Black holes are extraordinarily dense objects with a lot of gravity so strong that not even light can escape. It makes them, viewing them, quite challenging, that's for sure. I mean, I was looking at this, and I said, how, because this thing is so far away, you know, I mean, 5.9 trillion miles away. I'm like, how can we even see it? And what she had gone on to say in that press conference was, what we're seeing is millions of years old, probably, because oh. it, the light, oh just for the light, the, the image to reach us takes so long that we're watching the past. So these Reuters pictures, the, these are real. What we're looking at, yeah, some of these, well, and, and with this, I'm not sure, if, that may be real, yeah, where they try to see. It's hard to, to determine what that is. This kind of stuff makes more sense to us. Is that real? Because No. Oh, okay, but that's why I was like, this almost looks like a movie. Yeah, okay. like a science fiction yeah. movie, right. <laughs> this is, helps us understand it a little okay. bit better, but basically, I don't get this right, this is way over my pay grade, but when something that massive, like a star, implodes on itself, they said it, it forms what they call a black hole because they don't know really what it is, but it, everything gets sucked into it, including light. Can you imagine mm. something so strong that light rays bend into it? I can't even understand. This stuff so, is just so, way out of- I know. It's just like, Kind of go over my head a little bit, I'm not gonna lie, but so we can't physically see this with the human eye. No. Okay, not, so not, that's why we have these renderings. Yep, okay, and the, the telescopes, I think, it, don't quote me on this, I think they said it see, the Hubble telescope at least sees with UV light, so it's totally different. They're basically taking the light in some end of the spectrum that maybe we can't see, and then trying to translate that into an image that we can see on a computer screen. So you're seeing a, a rendering of what it might look uh -huh. like, that kind of thing. Hmm. But what's interesting to me is that we are, she said our telescopes are time machines, and I love that description because we're looking at the past because the light from whatever's happening right now hasn't reached us yet. So, you know how small we are? I know. We are so small. <laughs> tiny, tiny. We'll be right back. We'll take a tiny break too. And we'll tiny, be right back. tiny.
Welcome back to the 4 to 5, 30 more straight ahead. Lauren, Eric, and Stacey. And you know what? Jalen Gilkey's right yeah, over there. He just He's came in. Oh, hi. About to bring us some news. Hey, Jalen. <laughs> Thanks for watching us. If you're watching at home or online, Fire Stick Roku and the WFNY News 2 app. Remember, so many ways to watch us. We're also on Facebook, mm -hmm. so go on there. Start conversations. You can also <laughs> chat with us when you need to hop on there during the break. <laughs> and a big talker today to our top story of the half hour. Gas prices, folks, they are ticking up. Yet again, AAA says the current average of gas in North Carolina is $4.20. That's a two cent jump from yesterday. Here in Greensboro, the daily average is $4.19, a four cent increase from the day before, and that's a 23 cent jump from just last week. Whew. All over Facebook, folks are weighing in on the recent price hikes. Bonnie Fry says COVID kept people home. Now it's gas and lockdown again. Gail Hill says this problem is easy to solve. Stay home unless it's an absolute necessity to leave. And Ann says just two words, stay home. To help with gas prices, President Joe Biden suspended a federal rule in order to allow more ethanol and gasoline this summer. White House officials say it could reduce the price of the pump by 10 cents a gallon. E15 is banned during the summer months over concerns that combined with the hotter weather, it contributes to more smog. However, gas buddy experts say the change won't benefit most drivers. Yeah, it's not going to have an impact on on people that fill up with regular gasoline. It's not a, it's not a pricing impact. It's the availability of a fuel where it's available. Across the U.S., some state leaders have suspended gas taxes to offer relief at the pump. There has been some talk doing a similar action here in North Carolina, but state officials don't recommend it. Governor Cooper's press secretary said the gas tax pays for critical infrastructure funding and legislative leaders have said they're not open to a change at this time. With any tax cut, we would need to make sure the savings are actually passed on to consumers at the pump and not just added to the bottom line of the gas and oil companies. So I literally filled up, was it yesterday or this morning, either one, $71 because I have an SUV, so I mm -hmm. think the tank is like 20 or so 25. I don't remember what it holds, but I, I, I wasn't paying attention. You know how you like lock it yeah. down and I can do something on my phone or whatever. And I heard it <laughs> click and then I looked up and I went, oh my it's God. probably like triple digits that yeah, you saw there. it was like 71 bucks. So me, the other day I had needed gas. I had like two little, three little ticks left and it was 419 and I said, there has to be somewhere cheaper. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to get some gas on the way home from work tomorrow. It jumped like 20 cents. It was 429 at the same place or somewhere else. Were you at another gas or station? Or for uh, no just different places. I mean, they were all the same. It's all, yeah, it's all bad. Yeah, it's all bad. And I was like, I should have just went ahead and got it yesterday. So I kind of think it's just something that we're just going to have to budget into our daily lives. Like the prices are just going to continue to go up. I think I'm wondering, I, I haven't Googled this, but to find out, but I, I, this has to be top three of the highest gas mm -hmm. prices we've ever seen, or maybe top two. And I'm just afraid it's going to get to like $5 or something. Oh I mean, gosh. it is in some parts of the country, but I'm just hoping that doesn't happen here. I find myself, you know, <laughs> I told you my rule used to be, I'm not paying more than $40 to fill yeah, up. Yeah, and that's why I'm surprised you looked away I and started texting. I know, I got carried away. <laughs> Lost my control. <laughs> All right, let's head over to Stace. Well, if you're like me, you probably have a few save the dates on your fridge because it's that time of the year. It's wedding season, right? And this year is a record year for weddings. According to The Knot, 2.6 million couples are expected to get married this year. That's 20% more than the pre-pandemic average. The Knot wedding survey found last year's average wedding cost $34,000 and inflation is sure to push that number up this year. Claudia Moore is getting married in Eden in a few weekends. She says inflation has already impacted her big day. Things like food, um, flowers, um, those were like the two main things that like went up. I feel like not significantly, flowers definitely significantly, but food just a little bit because of the cost of like, you know, like we see it in the grocery store now. Those extra costs did force her to cut the guest list and make some changes. Instead of like a more fancy um, rehearsal dinner, we're kind of keeping it more low key now so that we can put that budget back into the wedding, um, you know, with flowers or, you know, the food in general for the actual day of. 
Moore says her biggest advice to brides facing price hikes don't focus so much on those small details. She says, for example, no one's going to care if you used a wax seal or not on your invitations. It's those little things that often add up. That's what I've been thinking about this whole time is, is this a little detail or is this something that will impact the entire day? It's not just affecting the bride and groom, but costs for actually going to a wedding have oh, yeah. gone up too. The Knot says the average price of traveling and attending a wedding this year is $460. Wow. The average price spent on a gift, $160. $160. $560 to $600 just to go. Just to be, I mean, we're going to a wedding up in the Cape. I bet you can only imagine oh, yeah. the price of the flights because flights have gone up. To stay somewhere in the Cape is pretty expensive. Very expensive. Or if you're in the wedding too, like if you have to buy your own is. bridesmaid mm -hmm. dress or suit, that's another another price. It almost makes me think of that story we ran a few weeks ago about the family that you had to pay uh, to go to the wedding. Yeah, for your don't own you own understand? Drink. Yeah. I mean, people might this might actually become a thing. Uh, One hundred and sixty dollars for a wedding gift. You know, maybe you should just pay for food and drinks. Gosh, I know. So for my wife and I, our wedding, it was our second marriage for both of us. So we decided we're doing this just for us, right? We're not gonna do mm. a big thing. So we went to like the Caribbean and we got married like on a beach, we hired a minister. And it was something so cool about it just being so chilled out, you know, and not a big deal. And I guess the funny story about this is that about 15, maybe 10 yards away from me, didn't know it at the time, was Joe Montana, the Hall of Fame quarterback. Oh my oh, gosh. Cool. So we didn't know until the next night and we're sitting in the restaurant and I looked over and I saw him and I sent him, he and his wife a drink and I said, told the waiter, I said, don't tell him who it was. Well, he did tell him anyway. Yeah. And he came over and introduced himself. We started talking and he goes, hey, you got married on the beach yesterday. Oh, cool. I said, yes, so we did. Crazy. So I tell people the only guest at my wedding was Joe Montana. <laughs> Hey, that that's a pretty cool. special guest to have at your wedding. Yes, that was actually a lot <laughs> less expensive than doing a regular traditional. Yeah, wedding. I mean, I will say a lot of money, time and effort was put into my wedding, but it really was a dream come true for me. <clears throat> um, but if you know, you're know you not somebody that's dreaming of being a bride, then don't spend all that Save money. money. Save yeah. it for the honeymoon. I, I'll, I wonder if the pandemic is going to change the culture of weddings in general because right. you know a lot of people they couldn't have their weddings so they had it virtually and then maybe now they're having like these big ceremonies after but i wonder if just how expensive things are people will scale back or you know it might change the face of weddings going forward i think so it might hmm. well especially yeah. when they see how much money they save i think it's either going to get much more glamorous and expensive because people are dying to have a wedding yes. or it's going to be other budget yeah. yeah we'll have to see great story well, let's get to your four to five roundup with some of your headlines. High Point police arrested a man they say injured three people while driving drunk. They say 63 year old Victor Brooks hit three people near the intersection of Springfield Road and Bellamy Street and left the scene. One of the victims with serious injuries are still in the hospital. Brooks is now charged with felony hit and run. Today, Governor Roy Cooper made a stop in the triad. He spoke at the North Carolina Association of EMS Administrators event in Greensboro. The organization focuses on improving the professional standards and practice of first responders. The governor left remarks on the state's efforts to support that mission and thank them for their service. It's a state-of-the-art medical facility and it's officially open here in Greensboro. You can see it here. Today was the official opening of the Cone Health Med Center on Drawbridge Parkway. The facility has been opening in stages over the past few months, but now the 160,000 square foot building is completely functional. The 15 service lines in building create a new level of consumer convenience and allow a greater emphasis on wellness and disease prevention. Officials say it gives people more flexibility than traditional emergency departments. If you had plans to travel to the Outer Banks this week, you'll love this update. North Carolina Highway 12 has reopened between Oregon Inlet and Rodanin. NC DOT posted this news today on its Twitter page. They are urging drivers to drive with extreme caution because there is still a chance that the evening high tide could force another closure. If major overwash continues, you've probably seen images like the one here. Uh, the timeline of flooding will impact there. Homes have been swept away to shore and roads have been covered in ocean water and sand. 
Well, Eric, we were just talking earlier. We could be expecting a little bit of that drizzle today, but it could get worse over into the weekend, right? Yeah, that's right. And some of that already happening even right now, Lauren. I, I think this will get worse on Friday. 70% chance of rain. It'll be on and off showers just kind of all day, even into the night. Rain chances do drop heading into Saturday and Sunday, but it's still a 50 and a 40% for those two days respectively. So yeah, keep the umbrella handy. You'll probably need it in the car if you have to head out anywhere. 69 degrees in the triad right now. Charlotte at 75 in the Queen City, Raleigh 68, Fayetteville at 70, Wilmington 77. Cooler though in Myrtle Beach, uh, much cooler actually at 66. Clouds tonight, a few showers already seeing that. 58 will be the low and then tomorrow's high 73. We do begin a warming trend. We jump from Friday to Saturday and by next week, low to mid 80s out there. And it'll be a very summertime forecast for most of next week. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, showers, here we go. And uh, yeah, you look at this, you think the radar is running backwards. Not the case. The rain is actually actually coming from the east back to the west because of the low pressure off the coast that will continue its trek inland. Notice where we are. All the showers around that low just keep moving through. That'll be the case for your weekend. So get ready for a rainy few days. If you haven't mowed the grass this week, you might want to do that today immediately. 78 on a Saturday after a high of 73 tomorrow. 50% chance of rain Saturday, 40% Sunday and hey, we're up to the low 80s. Late day thunderstorms not out of the question on Sunday. Next week, that is a summertime pattern. Don't worry about the 20 and 30% chance of rain. That's that normal, very isolated late day pop up shower. You got to think summer and then the high temperatures remain between 83 and 86 for Monday through Thursday of next week. Panther fans, tonight's the night. The most anticipated matchups this season are in. The NFL is dropping its 2022 schedule at 8 p.m. That means we'll find out when the Carolina Panthers take the field. Tonight on WFMY News 2 at 11, we're breaking it all down, and you don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. The Bald Eagle. What's up, brother? It's Jalen. You know, mic checking, mic checking, one, two, three. Baby Eagle is in the building. Baby Eagle is in the building. I'm getting kind of old to be the baby. I don't care what can I like at all. And she know that. Yeah. Turn my mic on. Turn my mic on. Your mic's on. It is on. You're broadcasting right now to baby. That's what I said. I don't even know if I'm I might be too old to be the baby glut now.
So across the triad, teens are prepping for summer, and for many, that means the next step after high school. The graduation season also brings a time to reflect on the achievements that the students have reached, especially during a very difficult last two years. WFMY News 2's Jalen Gilkey spoke with some High Point students honored for their hard work. Jalen? Whether it be magnificent, magnificent service to the community, overcoming traumatic adversity, or excelling in the classroom. Today, the High Point Schools Partnership honored six of the most dedicated students in the city. We started with one school, one student, and it's been so popular, we've now expanded it. Leadership is something that comes naturally to each of these six students, and today, the High Point School Partnership wanted to honor them. This is what I work for. Like, did a lot for that. I put a lot into it. On and off the field, on and off the mat, in the classrooms and be, just being recognized feels great because a lot of people don't get recognized for what they usually do. I believe that in the world now more than ever we need leaders who are willing to say what needs to be said and do what needs to be done and I think that if I can do that in any way, shape or form, I'm absolutely willing. And that is exactly why these students were selected for this honor. Education is everyone's business. Right? We're here to recognize our schools and to recognize these students that they're the future of our community. Our future is bright, our future is sound, and you can see it because these students are six persons, but they represent hundreds and hundreds of marvelous stories going on in our public schools every single day. And on top of the recognition by the High Point School Partnership, each student also received a very nice watch to remind them that the time to be a leader is now. All right, right now we're showing love to our Triad Scholars. Show off your graduate by sending us a picture to 336-379-5775. Make sure you include the class. And remember, you can't use professional pictures. As we head to break, let's take a look at a few that we've gotten so far. We're coming right back, stay there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie, they forever go together like a classic combination.
All right, so check out these sneaks. There's no Michael Jordans in here, but my husband has a love for sneakers, and I swear he buys a new pair every like month. I swear he buys a new pair every month. All right, so do we have any sneaker heads in the studio or joining us on Facebook? I'm not a sneaker head, but I know a lot of sneaker heads. <laughs> Jalen's probably close. I would say I wouldn't consider myself a sneaker head. My brother's actually more of a sneaker head than I, I am, but I do have a pretty nice collection hmm. of sneakers that I have at the house. Uh-huh. So does that mean that you are also like my husband and you like to buy a pair of sneakers every single month? Oh, no, I don't think I can quite afford to do that, but... <laughs> Well, again, it, it's not my dream, Jordans, but in my he's, dream buying, land, I would. he's on the Nike site all the time. I like going, shoes, but I just can't afford one? the big ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, there is a difference, right? Because, you know, we're talking about regular kind of sneakers, you know, mm -hmm. in his closet. But rare and iconic sneakers are on display in a traveling museum exhibit. And there is one pair, I got to tell you, they call it the Mona Lisa of sneakers. So really, it's considered a work of heart to sneakerheads. Oh yeah. Basketball legend Michael Jordan's old high tops from 1985, and yes, they are called the Mona Lisa of sneakers. An original 1985 Jordan 1, game worn and signed by Michael Jordan himself. A similar pair brought half a million dollars at auction two years ago. Woo! All right, on to some other kicks. Last year, sneakers from Kanye West stole the spotlight. The Nike Air Yeezys, I believe it said, sold for a record-breaking $1.8 million. And at this museum, they get to be seen up close, which I really think is cool. The exhibit is put on by eBay, who has seen, get this, a triple-digit growth of sneakers in the last three years. All right, now, let me tell you this right here. eBay makes sure that the rare sneakers are real by analyzing details like logo placement, stitching, leather quality, and get this, the smell oh, of the sneaker. Gross. One, a million dollars for sneakers. Horrible. Can you imagine? So do, do you buy them just to stare at them all day? Because you're not going to wear yeah, them. Yeah, they're putting. It, they're most likely going to be put in a glass case yeah. and just, just to brag to your friends. <laughs> That's right. That's okay, absolutely. and is that worth it? Like, if you had the money, would that be something that you would buy? Eric says no. Well, um, so I say no, except I'm th now I'm second guessing myself because of that that one, the original Michael yeah, Jordan. I knew yeah. you'd get those. I, I would want that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those yep. would have to be some millionaires. <laughs> I don't know. That's a lot of money for a sneaker. <laughs> All right. If you're a sneakerhead, join in on the chat there on Facebook. We'll see you in just a minute. One, two, three, four, five, right six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, but we have L U T Z, but it's Hello, hello. We're talking about Hi, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine. Hello, Mike Check one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's five. So Mike check one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
we were all witness to the events that unfolded after two shootings at popular shopping areas on Tuesday. One was at a High Point Walmart, the other at Haynes Mall in Winston-Salem. It's hard to imagine what it was like to actually see or hear the gunshots. I imagine there were lots of families at Walmart grocery shopping. You can bet there were young people at the mall doing what kids have been doing at the mall for generations, just hanging out. We heard of people taking cover inside stores or just running for their lives. It'll be hard to shake that memory. I wish I could say this was an isolated incident, but we all know it is not far from it. After the shootings, someone in the newsroom asked me what could make someone so mad they'd want to pull out a gun and shoot someone. I don't have the answer to that, but it's clear it's happening way too much. It's hard to escape it, no matter which part of town you live in. Just as concerning, lots of these shootings are unsolved. Witnesses are too scared to report what they know to police, afraid of retaliation. We are constantly telling you about reporting tips to Crime Stoppers, saying you will remain anonymous. I don't know if people just don't believe they'll remain anonymous or they just don't want to help solve a crime, but we've got to do something differently. We're always seeing cities and groups organize events to stop the violence. It's time you ask yourself, what am I doing to stop the violence? That's just my two cents and your four to five. WFMY News 2 at five starts right now. When gas prices peaked in February, we thought it couldn't get any worse. Fast forward to today.